All right. Welcome to the Matt Arroyo Show. And today we're going to be talking about my morning success ritual. Okay. A lot of people are doing morning success rituals. I've been doing it for, I don't know, in one way, shape, or form since about 2006. Um, this is probably the number one question I get at my gym, besides jujitsu questions and everything. And for people, because they see I'm doing the cold stuff and the saunas and all that, and they're always asking, what do I do in the morning or what, what kind of things do I do for health? And it's, it's a big question. Uh, the first thing I want to say is I'm not a doctor. I do what I think is right. I'm not liable for anything you do. Anything that I'm telling you is just what I do. So some of it could be potentially harmful or dangerous if you do it in excess, I should say. So consult your physician before you try anything I tell you today. So we'll start with that. So I don't go to jail. Now, you guys will be fine. Um, so first off, where did I learn any of all this stuff? It's always evolving. It started with just a couple of things and now it's crazy. It's gotten out of hand. I'm also going to be creating a course. Actually, I already created it. Uh, I'm also going to be putting out a course called the Morning Success Ritual Blueprint, where I show you all the stuff I'm doing. So here, we're just going to talk about it a little bit and give you some good ideas to, to implement give you some good value right away. And you're probably going to want to see more. And uh, if you go to www.morningsuccessritualblueprint, in the next couple of weeks, you will uh, have a website where you can invest in yourself and in your health. But I'm going to give you the basics of what I do. Okay, so start out. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is sleep. Uh, because in order to do your morning success ritual, you got to wake up in the morning and you got to get this done before you have to leave the house. So you're probably going to have to go to bed an hour earlier and wake up an hour earlier. Okay. You still want to get your seven to nine hours of sleep. We're going to talk a little bit about sleep in a little while, uh, different ways to get better sleep because sleep is the most important thing really for your health. Uh, Andrew Huberman is one of the guys I follow. And he says, I saw a post he made the other day. It said, uh, instead of asking people, Hey, how you doing? Just say, hey, how are you sleeping? Because that's a better determinant of how someone's doing. But that was pretty funny. Um, okay, so you're going to have to go to bed an hour earlier, get up an hour earlier. You want to get this all finished before you have to leave for work. If you have to bring your kids to school, if you have to get up for whatever it is, you have to, even if you work from home, you've got to get to work eventually. Uh, so you want to get this done. It should take about an hour, depending on what you add in. I'm going to give you all the stuff I do. And I, and I know for a fact, this is a lot of stuff. You don't have to tell me. I'm a nut. I love this stuff. I love everything about health and any new things to make me healthier or my mental health or whatever it is to make me a better version of myself. I'm all for it. I'll, I'll try almost anything as long as it's healthy. And, uh, and if I like it and I feel a result, I add it in. And that's what I want you to do. Try all the things I, I tell you today. And if you like it and you feel a result and you feel like you're getting better or you feel better, then add it in. If you don't like it, get rid of it. It's just like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Once you get to purple belt level, the things you learn from your instructor, some of the stuff you're never going to use. And you just take what, like Jeet Kune Do, right? Like mixed martial arts, take what is useful, discard the rest and move forward and, and grow. All right. So um, let me look at my notes here. Yeah. Be careful. So the, the ways to get better sleep is I would say, do not eat anything three hours before sleep. Okay, so if you plan to go to bed at 10.30, which is about what I do, stop eating at 7.30. You don't want your body digesting. It makes you sweaty. It makes you like bloated. It's very hard to sleep that way. When the, you're, when your stomach, when the food goes from your stomach into your intestines and it's gone and you have an empty stomach, this is the best time to, to sleep. So plan accordingly. If you guys are weed smokers out there, that's fine. Uh, I... I know that when you smoke weed, you get hungry and the munchies. Some people can control it. Some people have zero control over it. So if you're going to smoke weed, eat the food, and then go right to bed 20 minutes later, you're going to get crappy sleep. I mean, it just you may feel like you're getting better sleep, but, but the REM sleep is not where it needs to be. Uh, so just plan accordingly. If you're going to do that stuff, do it early. If you're going to um, um, watch TV, whatever, that's fine. Just, just don't eat three hours. Uh, before bedtime. That's a huge thing. This is the hardest one. This is what almost none of you will do. Maybe you'll try it, but almost none of you will do, but it will, it will play the biggest role in your sleep is no screens or lights 
like a TV screen or a, a iPhone or your lights on in your room, you know, a couple hours before bed, two hours, three hours, one hour, if, if, if like you can't do two or three. Um, instead, read a book, all right? Something nonfiction, hopefully, or fiction, you know, if, but some people who read fiction, if it's like a murder mystery, you might get your heart rate up, which makes it hard to sleep. I find that nonfiction books are, are great because you learn stuff and they're just boring enough to where you're like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to go to bed. Um, for me, intermittent fasting helped a lot for sleep. Uh, helped my wife as well. The cold plunge and the sauna stuff we're going to talk about in a few minutes also helps. Um, so yeah, implement a lot of this stuff and then you'll get better sleep automatically. All right, so let's talk about it. So I wake up. Okay, so I go to bed at 1030. I'm, I'm, I'm in bed reading or whatever at 10, 1015. And then 1030 hits, my, my body just knows it's time. Close my eyes. I wake up at 6.30. The reason I wake up at 6.30 is because my kids have to go to school. Uh, and they got to be there at 7.40. If you don't have kids, wake up when your body wakes up. I mean, if you got to go to work at 7 a.m., that sucks. Uh, because then you have to set an alarm clock. But a lot of people do have to set an alarm clock. And if you do, set the alarm clock, wake up. And the first thing I do, the, the moment my eyes open, or at least I wake up, is I pray. I am a Christian, and uh, I pray. And I want to start my day with a prayer with God. Uh, if you are not uh, spiritual or have a faith like that or, or, or don't pray, then that's a great time to meditate. Now, you might think you might fall back asleep if you meditate first thing, and it's possible. Uh, so the snooze is there for that. It's not for, hey, I'm going back to bed. Um, so I pray. If you're interested in the prayer, uh, it's four steps. First one is uh, gratitude. Second step is forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness. So gratitude, what am I grateful for in my life? And it puts you on a great uh, mental uh, note for the day because you're, you're starting your day with being grateful, which is amazing. It helps you, makes you feel great. Forgiveness, you know, I'm sorry, God, for everything I've done. I, I actually name out the bad stuff I do or think or whatever. Um, we're all human. We all sin. Um, third step is I pray for people. So if, you know, there's some people who really need some help their mental health, my friends, my family, some of them, uh, people have cancer, some people have, you know, stuff that's going on. I always pray for them. I pray for my students. I pray for my coaches, people at my church. And number four, um, I ask the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, for certain things that I am looking for, guidance, wisdom, health, just anything that you want. That's, that's the time to do it. Uh, so that's how I started. Okay. Then the second part, after the prayer is over, I go right into visualizations. Visualize the way you want your life to be. How do you want your life to be? Is it exactly the way you envisioned it right now? Probably not. All right. A lot of us are living a great life, but once you get there and you're living that life, there's always another, another realm of, of things you want, right? It's just natural. Don't feel bad about that. It's you're human. We're always trying to grow every area. So visualization, visualize my goals. Just a couple of tips. I always visualize my goals and what I want to accomplish. And I try to picture myself in that area doing what it is I want to do. All right. Um, if you want to have that awesome car, picture yourself driving that car, the watch, whatever it is, if it's physical, if it's vacations, picture yourself on that awesome vacation. If you're making, if you want to make a hundred grand a year or a million a year, picture yourself earning that. Look at it, go into your bank account, watch it. Um, Watch almost like you're sitting in a movie theater and you're looking up at a screen and that is your life. You're watching yourself on the screen, living the life you want to live. That's what, that's how I do it. I do it for like five or 10 minutes. Try to feel the feelings. That's a big tip. Feel the feelings of what it would feel like to actually have that life. And I'm telling you, it, it works. Uh, so yeah, after visualizations, I get up, I drink 30 ounces of water with lemon in it. Some people put a pinch of salt. I haven't really messed with that too much, but I do put a half a lemon, squeeze it in. The pits are annoying. You just squeeze it in, spit the pits out later, or you can get one of those little screens to block off the pits. So 30 ounces, um, you get dehydrated while you sleep. Your body's craving water. The second you wake up, I just wait You know, 10 minutes after my prayer and the visualization, I drink it down. Um, so drink that. Then I go into my Wim Hof breathing. Uh, you can go into a Wim Hof app on your phone and do some guided breathings. 
Um, from there, um, after that, I start to make my morning shake, but I don't drink it in the morning because I do intermittent fasting, but I make it for the day. I put it in a cooler and I bring it to the gym with me and I drink it at about two o'clock, but I, I create the drink. Um, more details in my course of exactly what's in that drink, but it's got a lot of protein, uh, nuts and seeds and all sorts of great stuff um, for your body, probiotics. Um, so after that, um, I make the drink, I'll be listening to the Bible app because I try to get my Bible in every day. Uh, if I can't physically sit down and read it, I listen to it. It's the same with books. If you don't listen, if you don't read the Bible or not, again, not spiritual, whatever it is, make it a book. All right. Audible is the best thing that's ever happened to me besides my family and God and everything. Just audible, man. I could listen. I listened to 40 books last year, 2022. I listened to 40 books. I probably read about 15 of them. So I probably listened to 35 physically read 15. That's, that's almost, that's about three books a month. You know how like wise you can get, I'm not saying I'm wise, but do you know how wise you can get if you did that compounded over 10 years, 40 books a year, it's 400 books. Crazy. Um, so anyway, so I listen to my books while I'm doing, walking around, doing my stuff, making my drink. All right. Then I go right outside. I head straight outside and I live in Florida. So I'm uh, very fortunate to have a lot of sunlight. If you're getting up at 5 a.m., um, you know, you may have to wait a little bit to get to the sunlight, but lay on the sun for 20 minutes. If you lay on the sun for 20 minutes, it does so much good stuff for your sleep, testosterone production, excuse me, overall health. Just listen to any Andrew Huberman podcast on sunlight, and this guy is obsessed with the sunlight. He says he makes a beeline when he wakes up. He wakes up and makes a beeline for the outside to get the sunlight in his eyes. I'm not that crazy with it. I showed you, I told you what I did first. But the second I start to see it come out, I go out, I lay down. No sunscreen. I know that's a huge topic, but don't put any sunscreen on for the first 20 to 30 minutes you're getting sun. After that, if you're going to be outside all day, get the most natural one you can get without all the chemicals that cause you uh, the bad stuff to happen to you. Um, and get a really good natural one. My wife, I could probably give you guys a, a clue on which ones to get. My wife gets them, but uh, I don't ever use it, to be honest. I don't stay out in the sun that long to need it. I stay out for 20, 30 minutes and then I get to the shade. Um, but yeah, let it go into your skin. Get in your underwear. Let, let it stick into your whole body and get that sunlight. And while I'm doing this on the sunlight, it's a good time to do your Wim Hof breathing if you want to mix two together. It's a good time to listen to a book or actually physically read a book or read the Bible perfect time to do that while you're sitting out in the sun. Okay, next. I go from the sun to the sauna. I do have a sauna in my backyard. Uh, I got it from Wayfair. You can get some cheaper ones. There are super expensive ones that I didn't mess with. I did not get an infrared one, although that is very good for your skin. The, the red light is super good for anti-aging and just making your skin nice. I didn't do that one because the, the what I researched, it only gets to about 150, 160 degrees. I want to get from 170 to 220. That was the, the sweet spot that Andrew Huberman was talking about. So I bought a regular, uh, just, a, just a regular sauna, like a dry sauna uh, from Wayfair. Uh, it's like a circle one. Looks pretty cool. If you get the course, uh, the ritual blueprint, you'll see everything. You see me doing everything. Um, but yeah, so I, I crank it up for an hour and then I pop in it. So I got to crank it up as I'm starting my ritual because uh, it takes about 45 to an hour to get nice and hot. I get it to 200 to 210 degrees. I go in for 20 minutes. Tony Robbins says, if you go into a sauna at 160 or more degrees, four times a week for 18 to 20 minutes, you will decrease your chance, your risk of dying from anything cardiovascular, from anything from your heart by 51%. Now there's a few guys in the world that I just trust without doing like much thinking about it. Tony Robbins would be one of them. I've been following him my whole adult life. He's never steered me wrong. Andrew Huberman, smart dude, science, everything's from studies. These guys, I don't question too much. Of course, if it's something crazy, I may question it, but something like that, I believe it. And even if not, I know what it's doing. I know that it's constrict, uh, it's opening up my arteries. And, and, and then when I hit the cold, it, it constricts them. And it's like my arteries are doing a workout, which makes them stronger, able to pump blood better, carry blood better to the body and give it oxygen. I'm all for it. Um, so I go right to the sauna for 18 to 20 minutes. 
right from the sauna. And I, again, it was about 200 to 210 degrees. I go into the cold plunge. I bought a cold plunge. At, I don't get paid for this at all. I'm just telling you which one I have. It's called thecoldplunge.com. And I got the, uh, the one that goes hot and cold, even though I never once used the hot. So if anyone's going to buy one of these things, don't waste the money on hot and cold unless you know you're going to use it. I never want to just bring it from cold all the way to hot uh, because then I got to bring it back down to cold for the next day because I try to do this stuff every day. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to do the hot one unless you know you're going to have a season where you're not going to cold plunge and you're just going to stay in the hot because it does take a day to, to, to heat it up and another day to cool it. So there are other brands. I know Joe Rogan has, uh, God, I just forget the name, Formani, Forsani, I forget. Uh, it's a really good one too. Morsani, I forget. Morezo, <laughs> it's one of those things, uh, but it's a really good one. It actually builds ice, so it gets to those low, low temperatures. Currently, at the, the time of this uh, podcast, I uh, am in 46 degree cold. Um, I'm gonna eventually work my way to 39. I could do 39 right now, but then where do I go? You know, So I'm just trying to gradually go down. I've been doing the cold plunge for about almost a year now. So they say 54 degrees and under will give you the benefits. And the benefits that I've seen and that I've felt and the reason I do it every day, number one, I do jujitsu and training and, and, and working out and all that. You rarely get sore. And if you get sore, it goes away in like a day when you're doing all this because the inflammation just disappears when you're in that cold water. I do five minutes at 46 degrees and I try to do that every day. I am minimum five days a week. I don't think I've done under five since I've been doing it. Before I bought a cold plunge, I was doing it a different way. And if you don't want to buy a cold plunge, you can do one of two things. You can go right in your bathtub, go to the grocery store, buy a couple bags of ice, throw it in. I bought this rubber ducky temperature gauge that I got from um, uh, Pinch a Penny, which is just any like pool store. I dip it in, I get the temperature. I try to get it into the 50s and 40s. And then I lay in my tub. Uh, that's one way to do it. You won't have to buy as much ice. Then I, I upgraded because me and my wife we're going to do it together. She actually got me into this um, through Wim Hof. And uh, we had this huge, like, big, what do they call it? Like a feeder, plastic, whatever. You get it from like a tractor store or a farm store. It's this huge 150-gallon bowl, it looks like. And you fill that with water. And I would put 10 bags of ice in. And that crap is expensive. You do 10 bags at $3 a bag every day. That's 30 bucks a day. You might as well just buy the cold plunge because after a year or two, you're going to spend that money anyway on ice. So that's what I did. I invested in it. You're not just wasting money. You're investing in your health. And that I have no, no qualms about investing in my health. I'll spend any amount that I can, that I have to be healthier and to have live a better, healthier life and try to live longer. All right. And I do a lot of jujitsu. So I don't want to be sore. You know, I just hit 40 last year and I... Uh, to be completely honest, I feel, I feel great. <clears throat> I'd say I feel like I'm 30, but it's all relative. So after the cold plunge, five minutes in there, I get out. And again, if you're going to do hot and cold together, it's always best to end on the cold. Don't end on the hot. Don't go out of the cold plunge and go right into a hot shower. You're going to destroy some of the benefits that, that you could have gotten by just naturally getting your body back to its regular temperature. So don't do that. End on cold if you're going to do both. If you're going to do just cold, get in the cold, get out, let your body get back to where you're not shivering or freezing anymore. Then you can take a shower, do what you got to do. Um, after the cold plunge, I go right to the rebounder. It's this little trampoline. You guys know the little trampolines you used to have? Not the huge ones, but these little trampolines, maybe three or four feet wide or around. And I jump on that for five minutes. And I don't jump too high, just, just a nice bounce, almost like you're jump roping. And what that does, we call it lymphing. And what it does is it spreads the lymph throughout your body. How do you spread lymph throughout your body? You can, you can do exercise, you can do running, you can do lymphing like we're doing on this trampoline. A massage could actually spread the lymph. There's a lot of things. Your lymph system does not have a pump like your blood system does. Your blood system has a heart. Your heart pumps the blood through your body. The lymph doesn't, it's just kind of around. And we want to spread it through our body, which obviously helps you, your immune system and helps heal you from diseases and things like that. So I jump on that. Five minutes. I got my bought this little watch. It's just time stuff. Boom. Hit that. Do that for the 20 minute sauna, the 10 minute cold or five minute cold plunge, five minutes of that. 
Then I added, just for the hell of it, because it's not that difficult and the dividends pay off, you will rip your body up and get abs and pecs and triceps and all that good stuff. If you just add this into your morning ritual, again, it's not that hard. Uh, it may be hard at first for some people, but then it becomes easy. And you can tweak the number, but I do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and 100 crunches. I try to do that every single day in the morning, get it out of the way. Even though I'm going to lift later or do jujitsu later, I still do it. Because again, it takes 10 minutes. Right? I can do the 100 squats in one go. The push-ups, I'm at like 45, 50 in one go. And the next one's like 25, 30. And the next one's 25, 30. And I get 100 there. And the sit-ups you could do in two sets of 50, three sets of 33, whatever you want to do. Or two sets of 33, one set of 34. Um, add it in or not. But I'm telling you right now, I never had this little, whatever that is on your chest, come out ever. It was always like the, the lines down here. And now I get these little cool, what do you call it? The Ninja Turtle lines here. Triceps are cutting up more abs. You know, it just helps. If you do something every day, of course, compound effect will take over and you'll get start to get ripped up. Um, okay, let's move on. So that's about what I do physically for the, um, for the uh, morning ritual. After I do the push-ups, sit-ups and all that, I'm back to normal temperature. I'll go in the shower. And go about my day. Um, the whole thing should take an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. If you did everything I just named, 20 minutes in the sun, 20 minutes in the sun, that's 40 right there. 10 minutes of praying and visualizing, uh, making your drink, listening to the Bible. Yeah, about an hour, hour 20. Um, but I'll tell you what, it's so worth it. It's crazy. It's like you feel the days you don't do it, you're like, damn, I'm just I'm a little off today. And you can feel it. Um, couple other things to add in, not, not to the morning ritual, but just things that people ask me all the time that I'll just throw in here for you. I do one, one green juice a day. So I have a company make me organic vegetable juice. I pick them up from the store, seven of them. I drink one a day. It has kale, lemon, apple, spinach, celery, cucumber, and uh, ginger. Okay. So I have to mix that up. I do seven, seven a week, one a day. Um, I lift weights twice a week two times a week. Okay. I could do four, but I wouldn't do that for very long. I want to find a program that I could do forever. And two times a week, I know I can do that 45 to an hour, one day upper body, one day lower body. Uh, do jujitsu four days a week, Monday and Tuesday night. I teach take off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I, uh, train in the morning and with the pro trainings and things like that. And that's it. I rest Saturday, Sunday for jujitsu. Okay. Uh, I, I lift on Tuesdays and Thursdays, sometimes Tuesday, Friday. And um, the weekends, I'm always active, bike riding with the kids, jumping on the trampoline with the kids, walks, things like that. You always got to be active. You don't want to do nothing in a day, really. But um, I get a lot of rest. And a couple other things that I do also is I listen to Audible. Like I told you, every chance I get whenever there's downtime, I'm listening to a book. That's how I, I was able to read 40 books in a year. Um, in the car while I'm working out, I have my headphones on. Don't do the AirPods. I know it's so popular. I know it's so everybody loves it, but you guys realize you're shooting radiation into your brain on both sides. It's proven. All right. I'm sure uh, there'll be some Huberman podcasts on it soon if there's not already. Uh, I just use the ones with the cord. It gets in the way a little bit, but it's nothing crazy. I put it in my shirt, I put it in my pocket, my back pocket, and, uh, and I go work out, lift weights. Um, so I'm always listening to the books, podcasts, um, podcasts about business, self-improvement, being a better father, husband, things like that. Same thing with the books. Those are my interests. Uh, chiropractor one time a week on Wednesdays, stretch every Friday with our stretch coach, Charlie Trezevin, uh, who's one of the best stretch coaches in the world. He works with professional athletes. He comes to our gym on Fridays. Um, and I stretch, you know, before and after jujitsu each time. Um, what else? Nature, try to get as much nature as possible, looking around nature, listening to the birds, looking at the trees, hiking, things like that. Uh, walking around barefoot outside is called, um, earthing, they call it. And it's very good for you. Um, we have an air purifier for the house. So we're breathing in good air. We have a, a reverse osmosis filter for our water. Um, if you're in Tampa and you need a recommendation, I think it's like 500 bucks. They bring the tank in, installation and everything. 
You're drinking the most pure water with no fluoride, no chlorine in it. You're drinking the most pure water that there is, and it tastes delicious. Um, another thing you can do is turn off your Wi-Fi in your house when you go to sleep. Um, again, these radiate this radiation that we're, we're going to be dealing with, especially with the 5G and all this stuff. Uh, there's a book called The Invisible Rainbow. You should read it. It's scary if you want to see what's coming. Uh, continuing on. As you guys see, I have a hump in my nose, which causes my breathing to be off. So this year I am going to get a deviated septum surgery so I could breathe properly, which will of course help with your oxygen in your body, give you better sleep um, and all that. There's nothing bad that can come from getting that, that fixed, um, except you know six weeks of downtime, which will suck, but it's all good. Um, I think that's about it. Um, intermittent fasting. Is a, is a huge thing I do. Uh, it's the, I think that's the last thing. And I, I don't eat until 2 p.m. each day. And I stop eating by 7.30, 8 o'clock each night. Uh, I say 7.38 because on days that I don't teach at night, it's 7.30. On days that I teach, I get home at 7.30 and eat. And I finish eating by 8. So it's a small window. But that's the window that keeps you trim. It keeps you cut up. You see your abs all the time. If you can do this for a long period of time. The biggest thing I get with, with uh, intermittent fasting is I want to drink my coffee in the morning. Excuse me. Luckily, I don't drink coffee. I never have. I probably never will. Um, everybody I know that drinks coffee has stomach issues and acid. And oh, I need a Tums. And all. I don't want to deal with any of that. I never did. And it doesn't taste that good to me to, to go through that and to be addicted to it every day. And if I don't have it, I get a headache. Screw that. Um, so, uh, and drink as much water as you can. You're supposed to drink half of your body weight in ounces. I weigh 185. Half of, let's just say 190 is uh, 95, 95 ounces. So this thing here is about 24. So four, five, six of these. With the reverse osmosis, water is the cleanest. And uh, if you can't get that or don't want to get that, get bottled spring water. We were doing Zephyr Hills five gallon jugs where we just drink out of the thing, the dispenser for a while. Uh, yeah, and that's it, guys. The intermittent fasting two to seven. But if, if I was just starting it out, which I did last year, I just started it. Uh, I would do 12 to eight. That's always a good window to, to give you an introduction to it. Um, and if you're going to do the coffee, drink it black. That's the rule. If you put cream and sugar and all the crap in it, you broke your fast. You're not fasting anymore especially if you do it at six in the morning, you just broke it. You, you ruined your hard work. Uh, so black coffee or no coffee or wait or delay the coffee till 12. I know that's going to be the hardest part for a lot of you, but if you do it, you will reap the benefit. Now I know some guys, uh, there's a guy, dad bot Steve, I think his name is on Instagram. I follow him. He's pretty good, but he does coffee with this special creamer that maybe doesn't metabolize as well. I, I don't know. But he, he does it and he's still pretty ripped. Uh, but he does do jujitsu as well. Um, if you guys do jujitsu, you can pretty much eat whatever you want. If you train in three, four, or five times a week, you burn so many calories. It's, it's amazing. Um, but that's it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. I go through all the details of all this. I kind of just flew through it today. That's what I do. There's stuff I'll be adding. There's stuff I'll be taking out probably eventually. And, and I'm just going to keep evolving it. And uh Oh, and when you break your fast, do it with high protein, high fiber. Very important. That's what my drink is. It's all freaking protein and fiber. Some good fats too. Um, that's it. Try it all. Try it all. Pick everything out. Pick and then do it all. And then once you pick things that you like or don't like, create your own. This is mine. It's not going to be yours. You're not going to do it perfectly to a T. You're going to do, you're going to add stuff. You're going to take stuff out. That's fine. Pick what you like. Throw out what doesn't work. Jeet Kune Do, MMA. Jiu-jitsu, do what you got to do to it and then and, and enjoy it and use it. It's going to help you become more productive. You're going to be more focused. I can't tell you what, what the cold plunge has done for me. There's a reason you go in it and freeze your butt off. You want to get out every second. Like there's not a day that goes by where I'm like, this freaking sucks. And you go in, you're like, oh, and then you, you come out and you're like, ah, it's like, it's it's amazing. Uh so. I bet you Tom Brady's doing all this stuff. I bet you anything. There's a reason he's in his 40s in the NFL. I bet you all the fighters are doing all this stuff, or most of it. Add it in. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Matt Arroyo Show. More stuff coming. 
and have a good one.